Hello and welcome back to another quick tutorial. Today this is the first part of how to integrate the ECS uh, together with Godot and Rust. Um, so let's start. First we will add the new dependency Bevy where we're gonna use the ECS and from there we will restructure a bit our project to split like an like the component. So we have a node folder and then we will create the ECS folder and therefore we will move the the code in the proper folders first to have a clean architecture from a project organization perspective and from there we will then start the implementation. During the restructure phase I will also try already to explain a bit uh, what we're gonna do in detail here. So basically for the ECS we will make a general trick. So the trick will be that we create a own thread and this own thread will hold uh, the information for the ECS. We will then use um, channels to communicate to the thread back and forth between Godot and our ECS. Um, channels are very good in that sense because that's a very easy way how you can communicate between two different threads without to worry too many things about the borrow checker and so on and so on. And it also adds a lot of flexibility. As the wiring with an ECS takes a bit of time, this video will be really split in f at least three different sub-videos which are then connected together. So basically today we will most likely just start drafting our new thread. We will try to create the ECS node which we will then incorporate in our Godot project and then we will just prepare the basic wiring with kind of custom events to communicate between our Godot components and our new ECS thread. In the second session of the ECS we will actually start to hook the whole events together to create a own system for it with the ECS and also some custom scheduler which will be used to run the ECS in certain scenarios and then also calibrate everything so that we can get actually feedback in our soon created ECS node. And in the third part we will connect the whole ECS with signals so that the subcomponents from Godot get notified. That would be the basic idea. However, as we are now finished and created our new structure or refactored our project, we are now able to finally start with the ECS part. And here we go. First, we create a new node, the ECS node. That particular node will be used on Godot. That's why it's located in the notes folder. And then we just make a scaffold kind of node. We add it in our mod RS file and we have a basic node structure. The next one we're gonna create the ECS task RS file. That one will initiate on one hand a new task and also should contain later the logic to launch the new um, thread where the ECS will actually run. In order to communicate between those, as previously mentioned, we will use channels to send the messages between the thread and the Godot components. In order to create the channel, we will rely on the sync MSPC um, import from the Rust standard library. Which imports for us a sender, channels and the receiver types and so on. Before we continue there, we will now create our ECS events. So the basic concept here is like kind of a um, it, it's similar to a web server. You are sending requests and then you receive responses. That's the basic idea what I want to highlight here. Um, of course, you can implement it in any different way, uh, but that's just one way how at least I'm 
favor for myself and which showed also kind of good results for growing projects. So therefore we have our ECS events, ENAM. Subcategory of that one would be a request and a response. And then we have our ECS request and our ECS response, which will contain the final events what will be used. In our particular case, we will just simply start. So we have an application we'll initialize as a request and as a response, we will have an application did initialize kind of event. And we also create a type alias for the ECS sender so that we do not need always to define the sender with the generic definition of our ECS events. As a next step, we will rename our function to launch because that one will actually launch a new uh, thread and start the definition to create a new thread, relying again on the standard library. And in order to cancel our thread, we are actually sending back the join handler in the launch method. And we will also send back a sender, which can be used to send something to this new created thread. Additionally, we also are passing in the launch method a new argument, as you can see, the node sender. The node sender is actually another channel contained in the ECS node, which will be used to send messages from our ECS thread to the go.ecs node. Finally, we can now create our first channel. Within our closure, we create a new loop and then we use the ECS receiver to try to receive existing events what has been dispatched to that kind of channel. And as a result, if we call it and mix it up with a match condition, we can actually eat up in case of receiving an error. That means we did not receive anything so far or something what was um, not valid. We just continue the loop so that it get not exit because otherwise our thread will, would be finished. And otherwise, if we get something back, that's an event what we might be interested in. And therefore, we return um, from the match the next event. And by using a second match, we get then just more details about our received ECS event. And therefore, for nicer project structure, we will use the ECS events request and the ECS events responses, which will then execute individual methods on the ECS uh, by itself to have a bit of a nicer code separation and more convenient structure to continue our work there. So that means we will now create a handle uh, method for the request event. And within that one, we would obviously also have another kind of match where we validate what kind of events we received and how we should handle it. For now, we will also not define too much there, so we keep it empty. And then we just implement a very similar thing for our handle response. Now let's add a new method so that we can initialize our ECS. 
and then later of course we will instantiate it within our new created thread so that we can call our new methods depending on either there was a request event sent or a response event sent. Part of the new is the world. So the world is in Bevy like the container which contains all the uh, components what we gonna add. And we can then iterate through it and work with the different systems and so on in order to execute our business logic later. Let's now quickly rename our launch method to be a bit more explicit, like launch ECS thread. And from there, we also let's quickly add on the handle request and handle response our self declaration because we want to use it for on the instance and it should not be like a static kind of um, method. And also do a quick refactoring here. Heading back to our ECS go.node and here we'll, we will actually initiate our new thread. And of course, we will then also store the node sender, the node receiver, the ECS sender, and so on in our ECS node so that we can reference and use them later as needed.
within the process method from the go.node, we will actually listen for the received events using the node receiver. And it's kind of a similar logic what we tried in the thread. We will again here listen for it, extract the event, and then handle the events properly. Then we just clean up a bit and do the cargo build. So now the library has been created. We can reload our Godot project. And in the next step, we try to add our ECS node. Therefore, we change the entry C node to the ECS node. In order to know if our ECS node is properly mounted within Godot, we will just create in the ready method kind of a lock, which we can then see in our Godot editor in the debug tools. So therefore, we just call it a go.error where we say ECS started. And if we build and rerun the project, we should actually see the message in the debugger section of the go.editor. This would be the end for the ECS part one. Thank you for watching. See you next time.